Hey Healthy Rolls, welcome back to Atom Immune, the channel about helping you improve your autoimmune health naturally. And today I want to talk about an update that happened to the autoimmune protocol that was set forth by Sarah Ballantyne, the paleo mom. She updates the AIP, like she has a um, reintro list from before, you know, in her paleo principles book and all over on her blog and everything. So she's kind of updated that just to kind of give people, you know, a better, I think it's about like statistical what foods will trigger people and what foods are just best to start with. Um, and because I just made a video about reintros, I think this is kind of relative to today because I was talking about dairy. Um, so let, we'll get into that in a second, but let's get started with these new updates. So it looks like she's added a section to the overall um, diet list, uh, which is gut health superfoods. These include high fiber and phytonutrient fruits and vegetables, cruciferous vegetables, mushrooms, roots, tubers, alliums, leafy greens, berries, apple, family, citrus, extra virgin olive oil, fish, shellfish, honey and bee products, fermented foods, edible insects, tea and bone broth. I'm really happy to see insects on this list. I don't know why more people don't consume them. Most of the world already does and I think you know over the next 50 years um, as we try to feed all the people that you know our, our planet's gonna get bigger right we're gonna have more people I think we're gonna have to do that anyway my only concern is getting that from good sustainable places like I've already looked into it it's very expensive for one this Usually it's in like cricket protein powder and things like that, but I think we could be eating them whole, but I want to make sure they're they're fed like, you know, I don't know if they're grass fed or what they're fed, but I know in some places they're fed like sugar and corn and, you know, different grains, and I think that's probably a bad thing. We should, we should not be doing that. So I want to make sure that, you know, our insect... Uh, food, I know you're, you, you are, I've already lost you. I'm really sorry about that, but this excites me. This is the kind of thing I like. Um, I think we should be getting it kind of like we get our grass fed beef, just the highest quality available. Otherwise we probably shouldn't. I think it's more important what we don't eat than what we do. See, a lot of people think they can add a little bit of apple cider vinegar and sauerkraut or whatever, but then they can have a little bit of chocolate and coffee and all these other things and it'll, it'll just make up for it. And I don't really care for that, uh, outlook overall I think we should we should more more be concerned about being strict than adding in these superfoods but hey you know if it is really uh, helpful to someone then uh, they should be able to do that but I mean to me I think some of these things should almost be a reintro I see honey on the list uh, and bee products I don't think we should be consuming regular honey. Here's my problem with honey. Uh, I've tried, so, God, I, I used to love honey. Like, I was the honey guy. Like, I would, get, there's this, like, wine and cheese place downtown, really fancy place, and I would go there and I'd get my honey. It was local, right? But the problem with that is, you know, I found out eventually, because I had to email them to find out, because nobody knew, the bees were fed sugar during the winter to get them through. The reason they were fed sugar is because the beekeepers were taking the honey during the winter and all year round, right, when they shouldn't have been doing that, because bees need that honey to eat and live, but they were taking the honey, so they had to be eating something, so they were basically fed sugar or corn syrup, something like that, a sugar, sugar water mixture. So uh, make sure you get your honey. If you do get it, get maybe a higher quality, like Manuka honey. I think it's super expensive like 40 bucks but what are you gonna do right hey if you're if you are eating honey it should only be like a little teaspoon a day or something like that anyway seriously it, it can be healthy it does have good enzymes and all that good stuff but yeah I tried it and I just could not get past it I and it's one of my I feel like that's one of my biggest failures not being able to eat, have natural sweeteners like it would just like sit in my stomach you know for like hours it really hurt my digestion I really felt that but I am very um, sensitive to like sugary things so I mean maybe that's just me let me know in the comments if you can relate it looks like coffee has been moved from stage three to stage one on occasional basis and stage two on a daily basis this I actually don't care for I see coffee as a stimulant caffeine um, same with chocolate and uh, I don't think these are healthy foods for really anyone I mean if you look at them they're not all that natural in the first place so I mean hey uh, for people that are really wanting to drink coffee I guess this is good news um, but again this really is a matter of are you sensitive sensitive to it or not are you caffeine sensitive can you tolerate that uh, I just I, I don't like to see people using any foods as crutches okay so when I see people eating chocolate and, and coffee to me that says crutch like I need this to get my day going and and whether that's good or bad for your health that, that's one thing but I mean we should look at our mental health as well when it comes to diet and lifestyle and I think relying on something for energy is gonna have negative effects overall especially on our like uh, adrenal system if you if you have thyroid and you're relying on coffee yeah <laughs> 
I'm not, I'm not trying to get into this, but I'm, I'm just my thoughts, okay? Um, for me, I, I do like, I used to like coffee. Um, I would drink decaf, but uh, it would still mess me up, and caffeine I'm super sensitive to, and even decaffeinated coffee has small amounts of caffeine in it, so you can never get away from that. I remember eating chocolate and just having like huge headaches, and I had migraines as a kid, and that's probably what it was from, and I didn't know, and that really sucks that no one told me it could be the food that I was eating, and being a fat kid, seriously, it's nobody told me. I'm not trying to hate on these foods or anything, but like I said, you know, they are some of these hyper palatable foods that we should just be really, really, really careful with. You know, I, I would honestly, I would put bacon into reintros too, you know, so I'm, I'm not trying to, I'm not playing one side here. Potatoes. These nightshade family vegetables have been moved from stage four to stage three in pilled form, but remain in stage four unpilled. I think this makes sense because, you know, while I think most people should <laughs> stop, not, not eat nightshades during elimination phase, um, it seems like a lot of people can tolerate um, nightshades, and a lot of them can, uh, can do potatoes. Again, like she said, make sure it's pilled because I believe it's solanine in these potatoes. Like if you pill it, it's usually in the pill. Um, so make sure that when you're eating like, that doesn't mean you can go out and eat french fries or anything uh, because these are fried and vegetable oils and the oil is like rarely changed, okay? So you're going to have like solanine buildup in that oil and it's just, it's going to be a mess. Cashews and pistachios. These nuts used to be in stage three, separated from other tree nuts, but have now been moved to stage two and included with other nuts and seeds. Personally, I would push most seeds out <laughs> end of a further stage, uh, but nuts, yeah, some of them, there's a couple that I would think are not so bad. I think being like macadamia nuts and walnuts, I would think would be an earlier reintro and I would push the other ones out, mainly because of like um, omega ratios, but uh, I think pistachios have a really poor, I could be wrong, but I think yeah, I think they have a poor omega-6 ratio, so I don't think any, but even if you are eating nuts though, make sure you're not like eating more than a handful a day. I mean, obviously these are a reintro, right? But once you start eating these, these again, don't don't treat it like a food group, okay? Add it like as a snack a couple times a week or something because these foods, yeah, again, the ratios are going to be inflammatory if you're eating them out of balance with your good omega-3s, okay? So make sure you're getting your, your cod liver oil in, you're eating fish, or you're getting grass-fed beef. Make sure you're getting your omega-3s. Dairy. The highest protein dairy products like Cheese, cottage cheese, milk, and isolates have been moved from stage four to stage three with a clarification that these products be from grass-fed animals. I appreciate that she mentioned that, grass-fed animals. I would actually, now I know this is probably going to be uh, controversial, but I would actually say raw as well because when you cook it or it goes above a certain... When it goes above a certain temperature, it's pasteurized, you lose those enzymes that you might need to break down those foods or any actual benefits to it, right? Now, obviously, it's going to have benefits of macros and some nutrients, but you want to make sure to get those good enzymes. So don't go to the store and just buy, you know, milk off the uh, off the counter or anything. Don't be buying regular milk or anything like that, cottage cheese. That is going to probably trigger you instantly and you're... <laughs> If you're like me, you're going to have delayed reactions for like weeks or even months with dairy. Dairy is like so slow to like get out of our system. I don't know why. It's just, a, it's a really hard food or toxic item to detox. And that's why I'm so scared to re-intro it, you know. Um, and, and I, like I said, I'm not a paleo purist. 100%, probably 99. So I, I like the idea of, of grass-fed raw dairy. And again, raw dairy, again, it's controversial because um, there you can get sick from eating raw dairy. But... If you're going to eat, get sick from eating raw dairy, it's probably going to be from like conventional factory farm cows, um, cows fed soy and dairy and antibiotics, not dairy, but soy and grains and antibiotics and all those sick cows. You don't want anything to do with that, okay? So if, if you have a local farm and you know it's grass fed, then you might look for raw, but in most states it's illegal anyway, so I don't. that's probably not even an option. Um, so I don't know what to tell you on that one. I might be doing a dairy reintro this summer. Um, like she said, it's a good idea. Oh. Maybe I didn't mention that, but it's a good idea to start with G. G. I think that was on the old list. Start with uh, grass-fed G. G. And then work your way to like a butter and then maybe a cheese and then maybe milk or something like that. You know, that way you have a better chance of at least, you know, if you can't have dairy or milk, you might actually be able to have cheese or G. Um, G. G. I don't, honestly, I'm, I'm just not going to follow this though because G doesn't interest me at all. Like, I know it's more of like for cooking and things and sometimes in recipes, but it just doesn't interest me. Like, what can I do with G? I mean, 
you know, like, I want cheese, right? Or butter, or I guess milk, but uh, I, I have coconut milk too that I love too, so I'm not too worked up about that. I'm more excited about like butter and cheese. Like, I would just eat the butter like off the stick, or the cheese, I would probably put it on the, I don't know, I don't know, we'll see. But it's not something that I'm really all excited to get into just yet. Gee. Legume sprouts. Uh, legume sprouts were not previously addressed in the reintroduction stages. They are now included in stage one. Now I've heard this, if a legume like a bean is sprouted, um, it has less of the toxicity that it would if it was either raw or cooked or whatever. So that I guess that makes sense. Um, I'm probably not going to do this just because I'm like, I'm against all grains and beans. I just, I just don't see the point in those. I don't like getting my proteins from plant foods anyway. It just, it never made sense to me and it doesn't digest well in my stomach. I might do it someday sprouted, but I don't know. And again, price is going to come, price is a factor for me. Like, where are you going to get sprouted beans from anyway, right? I mean, I guess a lot of people can do it on their counter, but like, how many beans could you sprout on your counter? I, I don't know. I don't, I've never done it before. Leave in the comments if it's easy to do. Maybe, maybe I'll try it. Chia seeds, chia seeds from the other pseudo grains which remain in stage four and move them to stage two with tree nuts and seeds. Yeah, I think this is uh, probably a good idea. Chia seeds do actually have um, decent omega-3 ratio. Uh, the problem with chia seeds though is we don't digest, like nobody digests chia seeds. Like they're fun to cook with because they like become like this jelly-like consistency in, in a liquid, but they don't I don't know. Every any time I eat them, even the before time, like I didn't digest them. They, it's like they come out the same way they came in. So, I mean, that tells me one thing that we're not getting any nutrients or omegas from these anyway. Split peas, lentils, garbanzo beans. These have been separated from other dried bean legumes, which remain in stage four and move to stage three. Um, I, I get this. This makes sense. Uh, these particular legumes are less toxic. Now, if you, there, it's a good idea to separate these from things like kidney beans or pinto beans. You know, like four or five kidney beans, I forget how many, will, like raw beans will kill you in nature. They'll like coagulate your blood and you'll like die a horrible death. So make sure you don't leave out raw beans around your kids or your animals or anything like that. Don't eat them. I, I know there used to be this like old wives tale or, you know, grandma used to t say you eat like one raw bean a day or something. I don't know. Anyway, just not a good idea. And ma again, make sure your kids don't get a hold of these foods. Like a lot of people don't realize that these foods that we were never meant to eat in nature are super, super toxic. Okay. Anything can be toxic and really anything is toxic in the right dosage, right? So <laughs> even water can kill you. But what I don't like to see is alcohol still on this system. It looks like alcohol is still, I don't know if it was, or it just is now, Alcohol in small quantities is a stage two food. Why are we putting foods that have no, you know, nutritional benefits into our food system in the first place? It like, isn't that why we're in this, uh, isn't that part of the root cause? I don't know. I, I don't know. Let me know in the comments if you agree or disagree. If you want to reintro it, uh, go for it. I do just recommend that, again, use <laughs> make sure it's a reintro, right? Just like Sarah Ballantyne says here. I would actually like to add that make sure you heal completely. Like, don't start reintros. I, th I forget what the actual time is, like 90 days or whatever. But don't start reintros until you're ready. Um, if you're scared of it, that's okay. You know, that's kind of what helped me out. My paranoia is what helped me find remission. I was so scared to do reintros. I liked feeling good, so I, I put it off. Um, I did a do I did do a couple early on, um, but they were all failures. And honestly, maybe doing reintros early on is going to set you back even further. Like your inflammation isn't going to reduce enough, you know, and <laughs> you're going to have to end up doing strict AIP longer. And you know, you may have to do AIP for a more long term years anyway. Like. I would say most of us, unless you're like a teenager, some of these kids, I see them, they're, they do the AIP and a few weeks later they're like, oh wow, I, I can, their inflammation reduces enough where they can actually add foods back in and not see a symptom. But I don't recommend they do that either. I don't recommend you add foods back in that you know, at least that you know were causing these issues or helping out intestinal permeability, leaky, leaky gut in the first place. Basically, I had my start from the help of the paleo mom and everyone involved. Uh, Teresa, thank you very much. Um, they helped me get started. They put me on the AIP community um, page so people were able to find my YouTube channel easier. Special thank you to Teresa Joy. She's the CEO and head of marketing for the paleo mom. Uh, you can find her at TeresaJoy.com or TeresaJoyConsulting.com. She helps out with a lot of people getting started with the AIP and just, you know, helping people find the right resources and connecting 
bringing people together and that really helped me out a lot at the beginning. She connected with me with um, some people so I could try some foods and different reviews, different AIP companies and I really appreciate that. Um, so thank you again. Hey, she actually, she actually did send me this book. Uh, Paleo Principles, um, again, so thank you for that. I never did a video on this, um, but I honestly, I still haven't gotten through, uh, through it completely yet. I look at this like, this is like my Paleo Bible. Like, look how pristine, like, I'm very careful with this thing. It looks brand new. So, um, when I'm needing some advice, I do go to this. Um, it's very good, and it, it's very heavy, too. But anyway, she also sent me the Paleo Approach and the recipe book. Um, unfortunately, those got destroyed in a flood, so I wasn't able to show those today. I'm sorry about that. Uh, but, you know, I'm not as into the recipes. You know, you guys see what I cook. I'm like, check out my Instagram. I cook very simple. My food looks terrible. I don't take all those fancy shots. I, sometimes I just mix it all together. I do eat my vegetables, uh, but mostly it's just, uh, it's, mostly it's meat. I'm, again, I'm meat-based. Um, I think that's the way to go. Uh, but, on, but I'm not against vegetables, okay? I'm not a carnivore, at least not yet. Um, I'm glad I never had to go that route. Uh, some people do have to go that route because they just don't have the tolerance. And I thought I was super, you know, sensitive. There are some people that literally can't have any any plant foods at all, and I feel really bad for them. And I and I completely understand why they get to that place where they're like, well, all plant foods are toxic. I I get it because. You know, I can't have all the foods that I can't have. Of course, I'm going to think they're toxic, and they are to me. But, you know, we have to go with what's best for us. We have to do our own experimentation, live by trial and error. And the only way to do that is doing the legwork yourself. So I recommend everyone just do their own protocol, right? Do the AI, Start with the AIP, but then find your own way. And that's that's why I was so successful. I had to add keto. I, I added intermittent fasting. I do other things. I live a healthy lifestyle. I do... I have just a really crazy life. All my friends tell me how crazy I am. I do, I'm always doing stuff. Anyway, so I don't want to, I don't want to continue ranting and this video is probably super long and I hope this doesn't offend uh, Sarah Ballantyne for one because my opinion means nothing compared to hers, okay? Seriously, like I don't don't take my I I just have to be honest and open about how I feel about things whether I'm right or wrong. Um, I have an opinion, right? I think everybody does, but like I said, you should follow your own heart and your own gut and do your own research. And uh, anybody can be wrong. I can be wrong. Key. Sarah can be wrong. Any of us can be wrong. Yeah, I don't recommend a lot of these things. But again, they are reintro, so that's something to keep in mind. Um, but back, coming back to alcohol, seriously, like don't 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 drink alcohol. Like don't add it in. Like you're you're gonna have issues. <sighs> that was one of the last things that I actually cut out because it's so hard to do. So if you can cut out alcohol, chocolate, and coffee, you're doing pretty good. Seriously, you're doing pretty good. Those are probably going to be the last things for a lot of people. Let me know what the last thing you actually restricted from your diet, what you cut out, and why it was so hard. Let me know what food it was. Anyway, I'm going to try to cut this down as far as I can. This video is way too long. Um, thanks for watching. See you next time.